is um, a, a rather interesting um, uh, element. It's uh, it, just some of its properties are, are summarized here. It, it's uh, it's very light. It's a very light but but hard metal um, with high melting point. It's it is uh, relatively transparent to X-rays. It has some uh, a number of uh, special uh, properties that make it very useful for um, applications in uh, in. Uh, in nuclear power and, and unfortunately also in nuclear weapons. Um, and then uh, high fired um, uh, beryllium oxide, which is a, a cal uh, calcined uh, material, is, uh, is very um, conductive thermally, but it, 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 uh, it's, it is used as, as an electrical insulator. Um, so many, here's just a, a laundry list of, of, of uh, many of the uh, uses of uh, brilliant products, and I, I won't tarry here too long. Um, it's a useful uh, element, as I said, but uh, it has um, some, some very serious risks to a percentage of the population. Um, particles can, of, of brilliant can... Uh, can cause uh, sensitization in a, in a percentage of, of uh, those exposed, and then uh, that can lead to, um, with uh, with a uh, with inhalation uh, exposure to um, chronic beryllium disease, and it's a it's an insidious disease that is that is treatable but but not but not curable. Um, Current, there's a range of uh, current occupational exposure limits for beryllium. Um, so the number of uh, OELs in various countries are, are, are shown here. Um, the, uh, the, the NIOSH REL is a, is, is a bit out of date because the um, Department of Energy in the United States and, and, uh, and Cal OSHA and what have you and, and other and, you know, various countries um, have uh, have lower OELs. Quebec has a has an, o, o, an OEL that's that's quite a bit lower, and uh, the ACGIH TLV um, re, uh, pertains to the inhalable fraction. And um, anyway, there's there's a move towards uh, towards lower occupational exposure limits for beryllium because very very low exposure to very very low concentrations or can um, lead to health effects. Um, there are moves, there, there's a move afoot in the U.S. to, to uh, lower the OSHA permissible exposure limit, and this will also impact the, uh, the Department of Energy um, action levels, if you will. And uh, there, will, there is expected that there will be a short-term exposure limit, and, uh, <coughs> and so the potential impacts of these new regulations that uh, that uh, will uh, affect the uh, analytical methods that are used by labs that that uh, analyze uh, industrial hygiene samples for beryllium. So, um, if you consider a, a, a short-term uh, air monitoring scenario in which you sample at a typical uh, flow rate of two liters per minute for 15 minutes. Um, ultimately, you, you're, you're looking at a, um, a, a level at the, at the OSHA, at, at the anticipated OSHA STEL of uh, 0.06 micrograms per sample. Now, you um, ideally like to be able to um, detect uh, beryllium at a, at a tenth of this level, so to ensure that you can quantify at and at and below this level. So, ideally, you'd want to you'd want an MDL of 0.00, uh, well, ten times lower, so 0.006 micrograms per sample. And um, uh, certainly, the use of a of a high flow sampler such as the the CIP10 can 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 help to um, uh, ameliorate some of these some of these constraints, but uh, suffice it to say that um, many um, 
man, many countries are, are still using lower flow uh, inhalable samplers such as, such as the IOM shown here. Um, the, a, a little bit of a digression, uh, what, what it is, um, it, it is pertinent to the discussion here in that the, um, the, the use of the IOM uh, it is would, would be in in keeping with the ACGIH recommendation or, or specification to use uh, the inhalable fraction, and um, but uh, there there are some some issues with the use of the IR of the IOM um, in, in terms of its its practicality for re repeated use. Um, one of the um, one of the T techniques that that may be um, that may be applicable, which we which we which I described in my previous talk for the use of, of closed face filter cassettes, is uh, to to uh, use internal capsules um, for for the IOM and uh, capsules that are digestible are currently uh, under development and and uh, I'm told should be commercially available in a, in a few months. Um, also. There's a, a project ongoing right now, which is funded by NIOSH, um, and that is to develop a disposable sampler to uh, collect the inhalable fraction of aerosol. And, and so this would be obviously applicable to the situation of, of beryllium sampling and analysis with the goal of uh, low cost and uh, in, in inhalable samplers. So the, um, whoops. Go back. The the sampler that is is being proposed is is, is a, essentially a, a closed face cassette device with a with a larger in, uh, with a larger sampling inlet, and then the the uh, insert is uh, shown here, in which there's a a, a capsule attached to a filter uh, on top of a backup pad, and. Uh, <clears throat> it is expected that that uh, that these devices will also become uh, commercially available in the in the near future. Um, I I discussed the the use of inserts um, already, um, and uh, a number of uh, NIOSH studies and and other studies ha have have shown the 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 usefulness of 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 uh, of, of these um, inserts. For, for air sampling. Um, just a, a, a brief overview of, of some of the analytical advancements in the past few years. Um, in order to obtain um, ultra trace detection capabilities for, for beryllium that are, that are needed for, for some of these um, lower occupational exposure limits, um, <clears throat> The uh, use of uh, hydroxybenzoquinolone sulfonate as as a as a uh, high quantum yield fluorophore for beryllium has has been described in in a, in a number of, of papers and also um, has been um, evaluated by INRS and there's a, a poster upstairs um, that uh, discusses this and we. Um, the uh, the use of ICP mass spec is is um, uh, it will offer much much lower detection limits than than what one can of one what can obtain by um, ICP um, atomic emission spectrometry and uh, also the, the the dissolution of, of um, the high fired um, beryllium oxide. Uh, has, was, was an issue of, of significant interest for, for the Department of Energy. Um, these are some other uh, issues that, that, we've, that we've solved and have reported on. Um, direct, re direct reading methods um, uh, are still um, only, use, only useful for screening purposes, for example, in the use of, uh, the use of laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. Um, there are matrix effects that um, can prevent the uh, complete ablation of, of some uh, brilliant particles, especially somewhat 
somewhat larger beryllium particles that are still in the um, inhalable realm. So um, there, there, there may be some <coughs> some advances there. One of my colleagues at, at NIOSH, Pramod, uh, Dr. Pramod Kulkarni, um, has uh, been working on the spark breakdown spectroscopy um, direct reading device that that may um, that, that may be able to be adapted to uh, on-site beryllium analysis. So um, suffice it to say that uh, the, the analytical capability is there for for measuring beryllium at, at these uh, lower occupational exposure limits in, in the form of the fluorescence and ICP mass spec methods and uh, also electrothermal atomic absorption spectrometry or graphite furnace AAS um, may also be applicable. And uh, the, the, and I just mentioned as an aside that uh, the use of, uh, well, th that Methods have been updated in order, in order both NIOSH methods and, and, uh, and consensus standard methods have been updated in order to um, provide guidance on the dissolution of uh, refractory uh, beryllium oxide. So um, I w th this is a, th this just a, a summary of, of the fluorescence method, which, um, we, which has been uh, very, very well um, evaluated and validated and offers very, 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 very good analytical performance. Um, and, and there are both uh, field portable and uh, high throughput uh, lab based um, instruments. And I, I mentioned that uh, the dissolution of, um, of high fire beryllium oxide re requires I, I, either the use of HF or sulfuric acid or uh, a heated solution of, of uh, dilute ammonium bifluoride, but uh, nitric acid and, and aqua regia is, is insufficient to uh, quantitatively uh, recover uh, beryllium from refractory beryllium oxide samples. Um, the dermal exposure is, uh, is, a, is a serious concern for, um, for uh, beryllium workers. Um, there was work reported by Nikas and, and co-workers a few years ago showing that uh, hand-to-face um, contact is, uh, is very frequent and, um, and that the use of gloves what may actually make the, the, uh, the situation worse and that, and that workers may feel better protected when they're wearing gloves but because of hand to hand to face and hand to mouth contact, that um, ingestion may be a a a, a, a serious um, route of exposure and uh, in, inhalation as well from from particles that may di may be dislodged from a gloved hand during um, during hand to hand to face um, movements. So uh, just to, just to uh, summarize, the, um, the, uh, the analytical capability is there, but a number of laboratories may have to adjust how they, um, how they are, are doing beryllium analysis. And, and, and uh, so it, the use of the of fluorescence is um, a very, very good technique for, for beryllium-only analysis if it's desired to measure other, other trace metals besides beryllium in the same sample, then, then clearly ICP mass spec is the way to go. Um, dermal contamination is, uh, is something that um, may require um, more consideration for, for the industrial hygienist and, and uh, put in a plug for um, ASTM, uh, I, I chair the ASTM uh, subcommittee on, on workplace air quality, and we and we have a, a relatively new standard on uh, dermal sampling of, uh, of 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 hands and and, and 
that uh, can be can that can then be used to um, the, the samples can then be um, subsequently analyzed for their elemental content. So, um, besides the U.S., Germany is also proposing uh, a, a lower beryllium exposure limit, and and uh, so the impacts of these changes could be significant in terms of uh, the analyses that are used by industrial hygiene laboratories. So I thank you for your attention and I hope that, uh, well, I didn't go too long. Thanks.